the very first thing that I want to illustrate, if you're brand new to frame, if you're brand new to uh, structured frame, I'm going to say, you go to the file menu, and there's an option here under preferences and under uh, general, where you're going to be able to switch between product interfaces. And so if you don't have, or if you haven't switched yet, yours is going to say frame maker. All you have to do is select structure frame maker, click set, you're going to be, uh, frame is going to ask you to quit the product and restart it, and in that restart is where you're going to be then uh, presented with the extra functionality in Structure Frame Maker. So hope that makes sense. Again, it's built in. I do get a lot of questions, surprisingly, where people say, how much more do I have to pay to get the structured environment in Frame? You don't have to pay anything extra. If you have Frame Maker 9, you have it. You just have to switch uh, between those two products in there. Excellent. Now, the other thing you want to take a look at, and I always highly recommend this, is take a look at some of the templates that we include. I'm not saying that they're, you know, some of the best templates out there, but at the very least, you begin to understand what a structure frame maker is and how it works and perhaps start extracting EDDs and learning by, you know, by doing and things like that. And so the way you can get to those templates is you either take a look at the welcome screen here and select templates, and we have one for letters and memos and facts, and we've had these for, you know, 20 years now. But if you click on more, you're going to be taken to the structured templates uh, dialog box here. Uh, another way that you probably have gotten to it is go to the file menu, select new, select document, and you're presented with the screen here. Uh, and down at the bottom, you have two buttons now. There's the Explore Standard Templates, and then there's the Explore Structure Templates as well. So let's take a look at some um, uh, structure templates here. And uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and take a look at this uh, plain one. And I'm going to go ahead. If you want to, if you click Create, you're actually going to end up with an untitled version of this template with no text in it. Uh, so that's one way to go about it. And of course, this is the idea that you're going to get very little tax for guidance purposes only. But um, I probably would recommend that instead of doing that, if you just want to take a look at some documents, uh, click on the show sample because this will actually have a lot more text, uh, even though it's uh, just basic uh, uh, Latin text here. At least it has a little bit more so that you can start playing with it as well. So this is a structured document. And the thing that I want to point out is that if this is your first time looking at the structure environment in frame, you are going to find a couple more options that you haven't seen before. First of all, there's an element menu right here. This was not there in unstructured frame. Uh, second, if you go to the view menu, you'll actually be able to display things like uh, element boundaries. Let me go ahead and display that. Those are the little brackets that you see here surrounding my text. Uh, I, I don't like that view. I prefer the uh, element boundaries uh, through uh, tags here. Uh, and so this kind of tells you that this is, uh, you know, the root element is report. Uh, and then from that point, you have the head, which opens and closes after report title, the author, and so forth. And of course, structure authoring means, you know, provides a lot more meaning to, to text through things like uh, metadata and attributes and, of course, uh, better meaning than to just say this is a heading one or a title, which, you know, doesn't uh, mean a whole lot at that point. So those are some of the other options that you're going to get. And then, of course, a big one here is going to be this uh, Structure Tools menu. This is where you're going to be able to, uh, you know, see the view, the structure view, which is what I just display there. That's one way to do that. This is where you're going to be able to go uh, to your utilities, for example and then uh, structure the current document using a conversion table. This is also where you're going to be able to build a conversion table as well. Uh, and of course, this is also where you can either create a new EDD, which uh, I don't recommend because, uh, you know, the view is kind of scary here. It's pretty much from scratch. You have to understand EDDs quite well to be able to add elements and so forth. Uh, what I do recommend, though, instead of doing that, if you really want to take a look at you know, start learning a little bit more about structure authoring and EDDs and so forth. Uh, start checking out some of those uh, built-in templates that we ship, and um, and then go to the Structure Tools menu, 
and do an export element catalog as EDD. This is really the way to go. So what this is going to do is this is going to open up an untitled document. It's going to create it for you on the fly. And it's going to show you in a regular FrameMaker document exactly what EDD this document is currently uh, using. And so again, you can open up any structured document, any any structured document. You can, I don't know, if you know of one, you can download from the web. Just open it up. Um, again, go to the Structure Tools menu, select Export Element Catalog as EDD, and you will get something that looks like this. And then you can start exploring and, and you know, learning uh, why things happen and so forth. And this particular EDD is eight pages long, and uh, here I can see you know, I can see why um, there's this uh, conditional uh, if level one, then use this style, and if level two, then do that and so forth. So if you really want to know how a document was built, uh, that's one, certainly one way to go. Now let me go ahead and close that and show you a couple more things here. Um, the other thing that you want to start exploring about the structure document is the structure view itself. This is going to be your way of guiding yourself through the document. You can still do highlights, you can still do a lot of those things in there, but notice how things become so much easier. You can collapse uh, different uh, hierarchies within the structure. Like There's this list. Uh, in fact, you can do things like uh, shift and click a minus sign and all of the, uh, all of the uh, parents within that same level are going to be able to collapse themselves as well. So you're going to be able to start managing the structure uh, in a better way. So let me show you an example here, what I was saying about context sensitive. And I'm going to go ahead and fire up this list right here. And notice how the list is the, uh, the parent of these three children right here. So there's item, item, and item. And I'm going to leave those uh, tags there just to illustrate uh, how things work a little bit better here. Uh, but watch what happens here. So I'm going to click on the first item, and I'm going to go to the View menu and Toolbars, and I'm going to display my paragraph formatting, which is not currently displayed. And I'm going to click on the first paragraph, and notice how it's currently applied, or it has currently applied a style called number one. And if you know frame, you know why. Because when I display my paragraph designer, which I can do by pressing Control M, um, I can go to the uh, numbering properties, and the reason why we use two styles in frame is one is to reset the count, and we do that by doing or uh, creating a building block called n equals one. And then if I go to the second one, uh, we're using a completely different style called numbered, and of course numbered is in charge of updating the count by one, and in FrameMaker terms, we do that by putting n plus. So it's, it's really fascinating uh, how that works. Now, in a non-structured document, and if you've used Frame, you've done quite a few of those, if I wanted to either add an item, um, you know, before number one, or worse yet, move number two so that it's actually step one, uh, that would, you know, require quite a bit of work. I would have to select it fully. I would have to cut it to the clipboard. I would have to then place a cursor uh, in front of the first paragraph, press enter, go back up, and then uh, paste it. And of course, when I paste it, I'm going to have to go and remove the old uh, paragraph style, which was called numbered, and then apply number one. And now what's number two now, I have to remove number one, and then apply number. So things can get a little complex. And of course, you know, if you're a savvy user, uh, that takes you probably no time. You can press F9 and press N and, you know, get it done there. But let me show you some advantages that you can quickly begin to uh, see here. So I'm going to take uh, the second item here, and I'm actually going to click, hold, and drag it using my uh, structure view. And a couple things happen. First of all, I get that little arrow that tells me exactly where I would be dropping if I were to let go. That's one thing. The other thing that I want you to notice is the little check mark that is inside the little bubble. So it says item, and to the left it says check mark. 
Now that's a, a very important little indicator because if I go up a little bit higher in my structure, you're going to see that that little check mark actually goes away. The reason why it goes away is because you're not allowed, in other words, this item or this element is not allowed to be here. Uh, and even though I can drop it there, I'll actually be breaking the structure. So this is what I mean by real-time validation, because you're actually being guided. This is a guided authoring environment. Now I'm going to bring it down a little bit, put it below or within that list element parent, but above the uh, first item, I'm going to let it go, and you're going to see that uh, a couple things happen. First of all, I was, it was perfectly okay for me to do that. I don't see any red uh, uh, indicators here telling me that I broke the structure. And then second, notice that when I click away from the structure and I click within my text, this magically and automatically became a numbered one style. And then the second one actually became a number. So again, the more you switch from unstructured to structure, the more you're going to be able to take advantage of context-sensitive formatting, the less you're going to have to worry about, uh, you know, are the authors uh, breaking the structure, forgetting to put heading ones before heading twos and heading threes and so forth, because the structure is so powerful that it's actually driving that uh, context-sensitive formatting and the structure authoring and so forth. Uh, and again, you know, with, with a little bit of training, a little bit of understanding, EDDs uh, begin to make a lot of sense. So I hope that makes sense, how to navigate around the structure. I wanted to show you, uh, you know, the structure before I actually show you how to get there.